Okay, these are the answers to the properties of matter practice test. Number one is a table in which you have to fill in all of the missing information so that all six phase changes are represented in this table. We'll start with solid to gas, which is called sublimation. And that is an endothermic phase change because heat is absorbed. Solid to liquid is melting, which is also an endothermic phase change. Condensation is going from a gas to a liquid, but that is an exothermic phase change because heat is released. Deposition is from gas to solid, and that's also exothermic because heat is released. Now we have two more phase changes. We have liquid to gas, and we have liquid to solid. Liquid to gas is an endothermic process, and that's called evaporation. Liquid to solid is an exothermic process, and that's called freezing. Number two is asking us to classify all different types of matter into two main categories. You may recall that when we did this, it looked like the following diagram. Matter is divided into a pure substance or a mixture. So correct answer is B. In number three, we have to decide if the statement is true or false. And if the statement is false, we have to write the correct words to make the statement true based on the underlined portion. So water can be classified as a pure substance. That's a true statement. When salt dissolves completely into water, we actually form a homogeneous mixture. So that statement is false and should be corrected. The substance Br2 represents an element and a sample of brass should be classified as a mixture. All right, in number seven, which of the following is the best reason to explain why iodine is considered to be an element? Well, you can have a solution of salt water that's homogeneous, so it doesn't necessarily mean that because something is homogeneous, it has to be an element. So the correct answer is not A. In this diagram, you can see a compound. However, it is a diatomic molecule. So the fact that it's diatomic doesn't necessarily mean it has to be an element. So the correct answer is not B. If you look at this picture, which could represent molecules of iodine, they are diatomic molecules, but it's composed of only one type of atom. So that's what makes iodine an element. The answer is D. In number eight, it's asking us to decide which of these pairs of substances are chemically bonded together. So we're looking for a compound. Table salt is a compound, and therefore this is looking like it's going to be the correct answer. Maple syrup is not a compound. That's a mixture. Bronze is also a mixture. Air is a mixture. So the correct answer is A, because sodium and chlorine are bonded together to form the compound table salt. In number nine, looking for a mixture, because mixtures can be separated by a physical change. Hydrogen peroxide is a compound. Iron sulfide is a compound. Salt water is a mixture, but just plain water is a compound. So to separate salt from water would require a physical change because we're merely separating a mixture. In number 10, we have hardness, density, melting point, and reactivity with water. But the only one of those four that's a chemical property is reactivity with water. In number 11, an intensive property is something that does not depend on the amount of sample that is present. So if we have an iron nail, different nails would have different length, different volume, and different numbers of iron atoms. But all of these nails would have the same density, and that's the intensive property. In number 12, by definition, if something undergoes a chemical change, it must involve the formation of a new substance, a change in the chemical identity of the substance. Correct answer is D. 
Number 13 involves filtration. Filtration requires that we have a heterogeneous mixture and the separation technique is based on differences in particle size. So A is incorrect because it says homogeneous mixture. B is incorrect because it says based on chemical properties. The correct answer is C. It separates a mixture based on differences in particle size. Number 14 is talking about distillation. And we know that distillation is a separation technique that is based on differences in boiling point, whether that is salt and water or alcohol and water. Different boiling points will be separated uh, based on how they are heated and cooled in the condensing chamber. Number 15, the electrolysis of water should start out with liquid water and it should produce both hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So the correct answer is C. Number 16 involves a physical change. Sublimation is the change from a solid to a gas. So therefore the correct answer is A. The chemical identity of the CO2 is unchanged. Number 17, if it's a physical change, we're looking for a process in which the chemical formula is exactly the same on both sides of the arrow. The correct answer is D. In number 18, air is a mixture, copper is an element, sodium chloride is a compound, and sedimentary rock is a mixture. If something cannot be decomposed or separated by physical or chemical means, it must be already in its simplest form. So the correct answer is B, because copper is an element. Number 19 is referring to a chemical property of magnesium, its ability to react with acid to produce hydrogen gas. A chemical property is an intensive property because it doesn't depend on the amount of sample. A small amount of magnesium or a large amount of magnesium is still going to be able to react with the acid. So correct answer is A. Number 20 involves a calculation. So we go to the periodic table and we find that carbon has an atomic mass of 12.01. We have three carbons in the formula, so we multiply by three. Hydrogen has an atomic mass of 1.008. We multiply by six because there are six hydrogens in the formula. And then finally, oxygen has an atomic mass of 16.00 and there is only one oxygen. We add all of these masses together and we get a total formula mass of 58.078. Correct answer is C. Now continuing with this data for number 21, we have our calculations for the formula mass of acetone. We'll break this down by the percentage of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Let's start with the carbon. The percentage of carbon would equal 36.03 divided by 58.078, and that gives us a percentage of 62. So we look at the four choices, we know that the correct answer is D, and then just to show you that the other percentages are going to match the answer, we have 10% hydrogen and 28% oxygen, just rounding off to the nearest whole number, the correct answer is D. In number 22, we have to recall the formula for percent error. So here's the formula. Experimental value minus accepted value. So that's the absolute value of that difference. Divided by the accepted value and then times 100. So in our case, the accepted value is 46.07. The difference would be 51.23 minus 46.07. Divide that by the accepted value, 46.07. If we do this math, we get C, 11.20% for our answer. All right, moving on to the section in which we have to write chemical equations for either physical or chemical processes. The first one we know is a physical change because it says freezing. If it's a physical change, then the formula of benzene is going to be the same on both sides of the arrow. 
And all we have to do is remember that freezing is going from a liquid to a solid. In the second example, this looks like a chemical change. We start with liquid benzene. We react it with oxygen gas, which is diatomic, so O2. It produces carbon dioxide gas, CO2, and water vapor. So we have liquid, gas, gas, gas. Make sure to include the phases of matter. This is a chemical change. All we have left to do with this equation is to balance it. We'll start with the carbon. There are six carbons on the left. So initially I'll put a six right here to get six carbons on the right. We have six hydrogens on the left. I will put a three in front of the water. So I have six hydrogens on the right. When I multiply each of those coefficients by the formulas to count up how many total oxygens I have on the right, I have 12 plus three. That's 15 oxygens on the right. I will temporarily put 15 halves in front of the O2 just to balance the equation, but then I'm gonna go back and turn all of these coefficients into whole numbers by multiplying each and every coefficient by two, including the first coefficient. So now I have coefficients of two, 15, 12, and six, and that represents my final answer for this reaction. We have ethanol undergoing evaporation. That is a physical change. So the formula of ethanol, C2H6O, is gonna be the same on both sides of the arrow. Again, it's a physical change, but this goes from a liquid to a gas. And now our last one in this section, Fe2O3, solid, reacts with hydrogen gas, which is diatomic, so H2, to produce solid iron, Iron is not diatomic, so just Fe, and then water vapor. Again, note the phases of matter, solid, gas, solid, gas. It is a chemical change. We'll start by balancing the atoms of iron. I'll put a two in front of the iron on the right. I will put a three in front of the water on the right side of the equation. So now the iron atoms and the oxygen atoms are balanced. And then finally, I will put a three in front of the hydrogen on the left so I have six hydrogens on both sides. All right, and we have a structure which we have to count up all of the carbons. There are 13 carbons, 18 hydrogens, and two oxygens. So my molecular formula, C13H18O2. I'll calculate the formula mass by multiplying the atomic mass of carbon by 13 the atomic mass of hydrogen by 18, and the atomic mass of oxygen by two. My grand total of all these numbers is 206.274. That's the formula mass of ibuprofen. To calculate the percentage by mass, I'm gonna take each of those masses of the elements and divide by the formula mass. So 156.13, divided by 206.274, I have a percentage of carbon, 75.7%. The same math is done for hydrogen. I'm dividing 18.144 this time by the formula mass, and I get a percentage of 8.8. .8. And then finally for oxygen, 32 divided by 206.274, I have a percentage of 15.5. Well, that was the last question on the practice test. I hope that the explanations were clear and made sense to you. Thanks for watching.